and welcome oh. to Inconceivable. I'm William. I'm Alex. And I'm Wesley. And we are the greatest good you are ever gonna get. It's a pretty incredible intro. And we're hot. <laughs> it is a whopping like 90 something degrees. Oh, so. humid. And we don't have AC on set. That'll, that'll, yeah. that'll change. Please, change that. <laughs> this is the last time you'll oh. see fans on the set. So. Oh, good. <laughs> but not our fans. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, but you may have guessed it with our intro. We're going to be talking about The Incredibles. Hey. I just f flip Gary. Good old good old Gary the Time Goblin. We haven't, like, said his full name in a long time, I feel like. Gary the, like, the is his middle name? Yeah, the is his middle name. <laughs> Gary the Time Goblin. He actually, he, Gary's like, actually, it's the. <laughs> <laughs> Gary the Time Hypha Goblin. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> yeah. My word. Nah, yeah, so we like, li William and I literally just got back from watching The Incredibles 2 with his family. Yeah, we weren't actually planning on talking about today, but we're just like, wait, we're going to be seeing it today. Why not talk about it? Yeah, and I didn't I didn't really have anything else better to talk about, honestly, so. But I'm glad because, holy crap. I know. That it's, was a good movie. It's really good. And I was just talking to William on the car ride here that, like, I'm so over like trying to rate things or looking at ratings for mm -hmm. movies now like because there's so there's like honestly so many good movies out mm. and that are always coming out so like i don't know it just seems like tiring and unnecessary i just kind of like to sit down and watch a movie and at the end of it either be like that was good or that was bad mm. like i don't know that does it for me now i don't know if i'm just getting simpler with age probably alex we haven't really heard what you thought about it what did you think about the movie i really enjoyed it i thought that it was worth the wait because it was very visually stunning and mm. I actually really enjoyed the story and the characters as well. Like I think they fleshed out <laughs> the characters a lot more. It's true. Especially Jack Jack. <laughs> you want me uncrush? <laughs> How if I tell you unpunch someone? <laughs> that was pretty great. <laughs> spoilers ahead for people who have not seen the movie. Yeah, Go definitely. See it. Definitely yeah. spoilers. It's been out for two weeks now. That's the safe that's the safe point. Yeah, we do spoilers anyway, it's always safe. I mean, yeah. yeah this is a safe space for spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that actually what you said reminds me of something like the big whole the whole big like 14 wait 14 year wait I was yeah. telling William about this is like I'm on social media. Okay, like I always am and Just like all of these young like kids younger than me who are all like man 14 years later so worth it like like but like you were like two when the first one came out, like pretty sure Jack Jack was older than yeah, you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Jack Jack was older than you. Like seriously, like they probably only knew it was 14 years ago because they tell you at the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. I I wasn't even keeping track. I was just like, it's been a long time. I was, I was like really little, like even I was really little. So I when it know. came out, it was easily our favorite Pixar movie when it came oh, out. Oh, it's still yeah. That defined like that in Toy Story like defined animation for my childhood. Well, and I like Peter Pan, too. A lot defined my childhood. The Incredibles was definitely a big part of that. Yes. I, like, I remember... It, like, at least the version I had came in two discs, because that's that was back when DVDs were still really cool and had awesome stuff on them. Special features. Exactly. And the special features for The Incredibles was crazy. Like, the second disc literally had, like, an archive of all the superheroes, their powers, ratings, stories, and they had thrown together, they, like, made up these, like, old episodes of this non-existent Incredibles, or, like, Mr. Incredible and Frozone show. Uh -huh. It was so cool. Like, back when special features on a disc was a thing. I know, and it was so cool, and, like, that second disc of the movie built the universe arguably as much as the movie itself did like it was so cool like it's really like if you have a copy or know someone that has a copy it's worth mm -hmm. breaking out and experiencing it so going into this i knew kind of the plot of the movie the role reversal with mr and mrs yeah. incredible you know yeah mrs incredible now doing all the work in the secret service He's like super the, dead yeah and i thought okay that makes sense plot wise like for yeah. them to do for a sequel but i was like i don't know it just felt kind of like is in it like there was nothing to indicate that from the first movie, so I was like, okay, well, it, it makes sense from a sequel point, but I didn't know how they're gonna pull it off. And then when I watched it, I was like, okay, actually they did it yeah, really close. They explained yeah. it really well because Mister Incredible was very damage prone, and Elastigirl is much better, at, you know, like keeping it to a minimum. I actually appreciated them bringing that up. I was like, you know what? That's, that's a lot yeah, more. That's sense. really smart. Yeah. yeah. Really crazy I, how they use the ending of the first movie as what I sets know. off the second movie in such a. It was a, so good. Like. 
At first, I thought it would be weird so many years later to just keep the story going right from where it left off, but it was so good. Like, they did such a good job. I wonder what it would be like watching these two movies. Back to back? Back to back. No credits. Incredible. S- seamless. It'd be <laughs> incredible. <laughs> It'd be incredible. I no, mean, but seriously, like, I it's been a while since I've seen a movie that where the sequel was so, like, in touch with the original. Like, like how the like original the actually Jedi? impacts what the new one did. I would love to see a, and I'm sure someone's going to make this on, like, YouTube or something, a cut of these two movies where, because you know how they open up with the with what's-his-face talking about yep. the event? Wouldn't it be really cool if they made a cut where it's all happening in the correct timeline? That'd be cool. So you see it happen, and then it literally switches into the second movie without you noticing, because it's just continuing that battle. That's awesome. And then we see the clip with the kid later on when he when Mr. Incredible is like, you know, there's this kid who saw some stuff and then they go to that scene talking yeah. about the event after the fact. That'd be cool. I want to see what that looks like because then you could watch one seamless experience and it really would be seamless. Yeah. It'd be like three and a half hours though. It would be. <laughs> It'd so be long. like a Lord of the Rings special. <laughs> mm. But like going back to the whole role reversal thing, I was actually really like, I don't, I don't trust people <laughs> nowadays. Like I was really worried that they wouldn't handle it like tastefully and fair like on all accounts but they really did it was really good and like they kept they kept true to the fact that the incredibles really are like a traditional family mm-hmm. and they all reacted to this situation the way a traditional As, family would yeah like they were all so they were all so much like team players like like mr incredible was like a real like he was a really good husband and a dad. Like he's like, I gotta succeed so she can succeed, so we can all succeed. Like, isn't it isn't it weird how this is the most relatable superhero movie that's ever been so, made? It was so good. Like, it's I'm, something I'm, relatable I'm, for everybody. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I carefully use an absolute like that, but it, I definitely felt it. Like, yeah, and just like, yeah, <laughs> like, but like, like so that, but then also like, Elastigirl is like happy to do this and they have like their little like uh, you can do it and you're gonna do it great so I can do it better like they're just like their little like their little cute, quips yeah, yeah they're cute like quips and squabble but at the end of the day like you still see like that she would be just as happy going back like to her family like that's where, really where she wants to be so it was just great how like it was the perfect thing where there was the best kind of perfect ending where they both appreciated each other's roles exactly to where now they feel more valued in the roles that they are but yeah. then also more in tune with the roles that they weren't yeah. previously in tune with I was just like I was really happy to see such a strong and deep Betr- per, like portrayal of like an i like an ideal like that was a great husband wife relationship like family family as, goals fam well, yeah exactly like the family as a whole but just like man you don't have that weird cliche of like oh they hate each other or oh they're just absolutely over the top for each other it was you can tell how much they love each other and they're still real you know what I mean it's nice it because good. after the first one like there's a lot of really like serious family dynamics going on between them that was yeah. rough to watch and then you watch this one it's like it, he's still maybe resenting her but they still really love each other and it's nice to see them actually you know yeah playing ball together basically yeah and like the kids were so much involved in this one especially jack jack and it was just hilarious everyone was really true to their character oh like, yeah they really didn't skip a beat no. despite the massive time difference like i was very impressed about especially the kids about how they didn't feel really any different than the first movie as far as what their nope. decisions were. Yeah, they didn't. One thing I did notice, though, like, someone else pointed this out, so it wasn't, I didn't realize it myself, but a while ago I realized that all of the kids, their names are relevant to their powers. Violet, yes. as in ultraviolet, Dash, yeah. self-explanatory, and Jack Jack, Jack of all trades. He has, I just, I thought it was so neat. I don't know why it took me so long to realize that. And they couldn't have... They, <laughs> little fourth wall breaking, though, because I couldn't have known that his powers were going to be like that. <laughs> I really appreciated... Um, like, my favorite scene by far was the whole uh, dynamic between Jack-Jack and Edna. Like, yes, that was something that, she, that I loved he's so like, much. He's, like, holding the lollipop, and he's like, oh, yes, you do. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. oh. Or she just dropped, like, when he falls into her hands, and she's like, oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah. I just, like, started burst out laughing because it was, like, such a... You see her eyes lighting up because she's seeing all these powers, and she's like, "What can I do?" I loved this it character. when I lo- sorry. I loved it when she held him up to the voice recognition, and he's like, "Blah blah blah blah,", blah and it opened. <laughs> opened. 
Dude, uh -huh. I was dying at that scene. I, I laughed a lot in this movie. I love how they use like it's what was it? It's wildberry lavender flavored. Yes. Like lavender. Everybody's talking about it's lavender now. Darling. I know. Uh, what a great it. way to bring back Edna too, by the way. I know mm. she was only in it for a little bit, but it was it was meaningful. And I mean, I'm pretty sure she was in well, not as much, but almost as much time as the first one, because she has two appearances in the first one. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was like in. The bad guy, I mean, like, it was kind of predictable, honestly. Yeah, I called it. I called it way into the movie, but it didn't really change the experience. It no. didn't. It didn't dull it. I liked how it worked out because the bad guy, or yeah, you know, I forget her name, but I don't remember her name. The way she the used other people. Slaver. Yeah, the, yeah. That you know, was kind of a weird name, but the way I she actually used liked other the name. people. That was clever. I thought it was very clever how she used people to, you know throw people off the scent. Yeah. Like, just, like, just being able to mind control everyone. Yeah, because, like, way into the movie, I called that it was all set up. I was, like, when when she was like, but I didn't catch him, and she was like, well, stop talking to her and show her. Right then is where I thought they were going to be like, yeah, we made the villain up. I thought that's when they were going to, but, like, so I... Hmm. But it was cool. I liked, the, like, the new heroes. I, mm. One of the things that's that I really appreciate about the Incredible Movies is that they're just, they just feels so fleshed out and so like tangible, I guess, because yeah. they actually deal with some real life problems, like family issues, or is it right to break the law to do something good for other? Yeah, else? like they were like bringing up serious questions. In it was like movies. Incredibles: like, Civil War. <laughs> 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 it's nice to see Pixar. Like Pixar's always been pretty good about that sort of stuff, but I feel like with Incredibles, the movies, mm -hmm. like they they take it up a notch because like. It can be more serious, even though it's so much fun to watch. And they really yeah. stayed so true to what The Incredibles is. And I will say, yes, the, the villain was kind of a disappointment, but I will say I'm okay oh. with that because the focus is not on the villain in this. The focus is on them as a family, and I feel like that really, really was done perfectly, and I would take that over a good villain any day. I actually felt like the villain fit pretty well. Like it fit well. When, it's just when, not the same when, syndrome. When she syndrome when she is hard to talk. when she had her behind the glass in like in like the like the cold area and she was like explaining like her past and like it made it so like oh okay she's not just a plot device like yeah. I don't know I I still mm -hmm. felt like it was a comparable villain to syndrome not as not as good. Don't make your face at me. Okay. okay. <laughs> like not not as good, but I felt like it was it was good. It fit. My saying was a bad villain. Yeah. I was saying it was a great villain, and Syndrome was a great villain. Yeah. It's nice they actually called it out that he was monologuing. It's like yeah. just, people do it all the time, and then turns out she does the exact same. Are thing. you monologuing? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, basically. Yeah. It's nice to see new uh, new superheroes as well because we only saw a couple that. Well, like we saw Brief them floods. dying with, with the capes and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, other than that, we basically just had, you know, the Incredibles and Frozen. Yeah. Oh, and this so one we had a lot more, and it was nice to see like Void was cool. Void was cool. Something that really bothers me, and I said this to you as soon as I saw it. That girl, the the person who ends up being the bad guy, she reminds me so much of that girl from Megamind. Tina, the Tina Fey character. Yeah. 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 Um, I did too. I caught it. Roxanne Ritchie. Yeah. Roxanne, which Richie. is weird, because uh -huh. they're two completely different. Yeah, oh, I, I, I know that she reminds me crossover. Make it happen. <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't like that. What Mega Mine and the, the yeah, it would ruin the Incredibles. Mm. <laughs> you would Mega Mine was fun, but let's face it, you can't taint the sacred cow that is the Incredibles. I don't know. I really love Mega Mine. I think it's a really underappreciated movie. It is. I, would I thought it was kind of funny that, that that's too. the move. That's the character it reminded me from was another superhero technically yeah. movie. I'm your space dad. <laughs> <laughs> Still my favorite line from that movie. Um. So do you guys think it was worth the waiting 14 years for this movie to come out? Yeah, I was actually telling William that like I really did not mind that we waited. I mean, of course I wanted another Incredibles movie, but I, if you under like. We don't need a sequel for everything, all right? Like, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Like, it makes things special for them to just be one of them. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that makes the original Incredibles so special is that there was just one for so long. And I think that's what allowed The Incredibles 2 to still be so fun and fresh is we haven't been watching Incredibles movies for 14 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad we haven't been. 
I think it's something that the director said. I think it's uh, Brad Bird. Yeah, he's was really that, not a fan of sequelitis. He, he he wanted to make a story that was worth telling, basically. Mm -hmm. Not just make a sequel, but make something that he was proud of, and that's why he took so long to make it. So he wanted to do a good job and make sure that it, it flowed nicely. And yeah, see, like, I knew that, and that's why I was like, okay, the 14-year thing is fine. And yeah. uh, for those, I don't know if they'll ever show this in the DVD, but in the theaters they had this little thing with all the voice actors being like, yo, we know you've been waiting 14 years for this. It just and they explained about their animation process stuff like that. As far as I know, they didn't talk about the story in a little bit there at all, which I was kind of like disappointed because here's the thing: they said if they said in that little like one minute clip like, "Hey, we love Incredibles just as much as you guys, and we've been wanting to make a sequel ever since that one became a huge success." However, we wanted to make sure that there was a story worth telling, and for the longest time we didn't have one. Yeah, now we do, but that's not what they said. What they said is like, you know what? Animation is hard, and it does all these things, which is true, but this comes not from- Not 14 years worth of hard. Not 14 years, but and not from the company that makes more animated films than any other company. It's been doing it longer than any other company. It's so true. So I feel like there is some truth to that, but I feel like that doesn't equate to 14 years, you it's, know? It's true, but it didn't bother me. I, all, when that came on, I just appreciated the fact that they- that they recognized what we've all like. It's like they heard us yeah. talking. And then like they recognized it's been. And a long I appreciate time. that. I yeah. just feel like their their way of delivering it was weird because, like I said, we yeah. heard about Bird talking about the reason why there hasn't been a Credibles movie till now. I like that reasoning. Why didn't they put that same reasoning yeah. in that little clip? Yeah. Another thing is, is that if they're talking about oh, about how hard the animation is, well, guess what? This isn't like any groundbreaking animation for you, Pixar, because you're trying to match with the original yeah. thing, which was innovative at the time, but now is vastly outdated outdated, look, outdated but which is ironic is now it's a style choice which is cool kind of like how retro games are making a comeback yeah. by going like pixels and stuff like that oh it's a style choice Incredibles this new Incredibles movie the way that it's done is a style choice they've improved stuff like I noticed yeah. that the hair was better in this one and like probably water and things of that nature yeah. but they're still the same types of like animated characters and they're not any better animated because it was good there was nothing to really improve on from yeah. the, what we have learned now. There was really simple detail stuff, but they didn't want to change it and make it more realistic because then that would take away from what Incredibles was made when it was back then. Incredibles yeah. was the first. Well, it was still a style choice. I What you're saying is true, but it was still a style choice back then. Right. Like they, they picked, they wanted it to look like Right. That. But what I'm saying yeah. is that this wasn't any pushing any boundaries for them no. as far as technology wise. They didn't need to and they didn't want to. And that's, yeah. and that's fine. But that's why I'm calling even more bull crap on their message about oh, yeah, animation yeah. is hard. Yeah. I, d I didn't even pick up on that though until we started talking about it afterwards. Um, but regardless, I don't want to get hung up on that first prelude thing that they talked about why it's been 14 years. I don't care. We have the movie now. I know. It's fantastic. I, I just like, it just kills me that at, like no one had been talking about how long it was and then all of a sudden the movie comes out and everybody's like, oh yeah, 14 years ago. Uh, oh my I, word, it was so long ago. I don't know because I've been like, talk, yeah. whenever like a sequel to another movie that came out from Pixar, I'd just be like, well, that's great, but where's Incredibles 2? I've been, like, I've been, yeah, no, yeah, I've been complaining three, not, about Incredibles not 2 I not existing like, until, since Cars 2. Once they put out Cars 2, I was like, okay, really? What about yeah, Incredibles? No, I just meant like the specific, like, how many years have gone by. Like, I don't know. I wasn't even aware it had been I just think it's your lack years. of being social lately. I don't know. I also just think people are trying to know more than they actually do. And they probably, those people probably do exist. But yeah. at least is my circle is aware of. This was our childhood movie that we oh, loved and loved, and now we have Two one as adults, which is weird, yeah. you know? Oh, definitely. The Incredibles, like, it's really a hard choice for me because I love Toy Story, but The Incredibles is definitely one of my favorite movies of all time. Actually, I think I put it in my list on Facebook. And so. if for some reason you're wondering, is this better than the first one? I think that I don't it, care to make that but see, but see, here's the best thing is that I don't think in this case it matters because really what this does more than anything else is that it truly extends the first movie where it almost makes it seem like one bigger experience. Yep. So in a way, I don't even like comparing this. I just like adding this yeah. to the original to make it even one bigger Incredibles movie. If I had to choose, the first one is still better just because... Everything's new and it was that every, idea. Everything's new and I think I the story... The story was good in Incredibles 2, but the story was better in Incredibles 1. The best and, it, I think, and I think it was just more epic. It had a bigger scope. Like, because there's a lot more going on. The best on. thing is that they had huge expectations coming into this movie. And it, they really it was, met it. it. It was great. Yes. Yeah. Like, 
the fact that no one's complaining about this movie, like some people are saying, mm, I still like the first one better, but they're not saying that this one's bad. Like, I've seen the ratings, they've been fantastic. The fact yeah. that no one's complaining about this movie is honestly a miracle, and I feel like yeah. people aren't talking about that aspect enough because it's way more fun to rag on bad movies than it is to enjoy better yeah. ones. So we need to like freaking celebrate about how freaking amazing this movie is compared to its expectations yeah. that it had for it. Will it be 14 years before we get another one? <laughs> I mean, honestly, at this point, that seems about right. Like, if it did, it wouldn't bother me, to be honest. What is great, kinda... though, is that, again, they felt they kind of left the movie at a similar point they did with the first oh, yeah. one. They're like, yeah, we could add more, but... Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of open-ended. I, thi I think it would be fun at, one, at some point to fast-forward a little bit. Yeah, I, I was gonna say not, not a great whole lot, just a little bit. Maybe Dash is a teenager now, and Violet's older. I'd be you cool know what with that. I, yeah, I would. If they were to do an Incredibles three, I would appreciate the kids getting older and yeah. see what they're like just as scale, thinking about adulthood. Just scale all the kids up, a l like na like Jack Jack is now Dash's age. Dash is now let, like closer to Violet's age, and Violet's now. Let adult. Dash and Violet be the main characters, and Mister and Mrs. Credible be more cameo characters. Yeah, no, that would be fun. Yeah, I enjoy that. Anything else you want to add, Alex? It's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is. It is so hot up Jeez. here. Jeez. And it's not Alex for once. <sighs> I'd say some uh, guns oh, was, out, but we're inside. I was going to say, I was like, is, was that just wasted on him? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, well, I'm going to go into mine now, my topic specifically, being, um, so we talked about this, man, it feels like forever ago, the Disney and Fox merger. Yes. If you haven't been following this, some things happened. <laughs> Which so, I thought was over. <laughs> so I'll, I'll I was... give you the same description as I gave you in the car earlier today. Yeah, yeah. So, 21, uh, 21st Century Fox, and I make this distinction. Disney did not buy out Fox. Yeah. They bought out 21st Century which Fox. Which is their, like, entertainment their, division. Which is their entertainment, which includes all their movie-related properties. Yeah. Um, and some television properties. None of their none of their news properties. Like, their, some of their sports stuff. And... Um, some random channels like I didn't know they they own um like Nat Geo yeah yeah um and just other little stuff like that yeah Disney like out buy like literally like buying Fox as a whole outright would never happen no. unless Disney is like some no. like Armageddon Empire from yeah. biblical prophecy or so something. not yet <laughs> anything Fox <laughs> that's political or business related still exists with Fox yeah. everything entertainment wise now is owned by Disney and that's basically the biggest distinction but this whole thing came up where like Disney's like yo we want to buy out 21st Century Fox probably a big attention to that is like yo Marvel's being getting freaking huge right now we want all the Marvel yeah. characters um, we got Sony to work with us we're probably never going to acquire the rights to Spider-Man but hey at least we're on a handshake deal where we can work with Spider-Man yeah because Sony's like been that. actually like kind of successful with Spider-Man yeah relatively so now now they're like okay so now we have the one place left uh, yep. to go which is 21st century fox and that's way too many characters to license so like we're just gonna freaking buy you out yeah um, we can't get you to work like it'd be just too complicated to get you right. to work with us on all of them exactly so all of a sudden this is going well and and fox is like yeah we'll do that sounds good like here's a bunch of money he's like oh that sounds good i'll take that yeah yeah uh and they haven't like signed anything but they're like going through the motions of doing this a few months pass and comcast out of nowhere is like yo we want it. Here's some more money. <laughs> you, you like money, right? Here's more money. You take us. Listen to us. And they're like, hmm, that's, a, that's an interesting proposal you got there. I'm going to have to think about this one. And Disney, after thinking about it a while, was like, oh, oh, hold on. Here's some more money. And they're like, ah, see? See? I know you come around. And then they took Disney's deal and signed it. That's basically what happened. Oh. And that's... And I know it seems like it would be the right position to be against the Disney taking it over Comcast, but the thing is, and someone explained this to me, that Comcast only really wanted to buy out 21st Century Fox because another thing that they have is the biggest share in Hulu, and Comcast wanted that share specifically. Yeah. Comcast would have then taken all those properties that we love and probably would have given it to some other random bozo. I was like, here. Uh, make us money. Make 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 superhero movies. Make make us yeah. money. You know. Yeah, I That's, did not want Comcast to end up with Fox. Disney actually cares about those characters yeah. and is going to take them under their wing. Let's and be give real them though. Movies. It's exactly the way you explained it. Comcast was never going to get it. There was no. There was no way Disney was not getting this. Like they, they weren't going to let it slip that close. exactly. Disney they, they, has. This wasn't just like a business thing. They were going to get those rights. Like they were. And let me say, like Disney is going big on this because 
for for uh, oh, Alex. <laughs> for for uh, comparison, and I know that there's a lot more properties involved with this Fox deal. But Disney bought out Lucasfilm for four billion dollars. Yeah. They just bought out 21st Century Fox for, for 71 70. billion dollars. That's a huge billion dollars. <laughs> um, and. Um, and I, like I said, I know there's a lot more properties involved, but the amount of money Disney's been freaking making with Star Wars, they made that back, I guarantee you, after the first movie. Because not oh, just yeah. from the first movie, but all the other like merchandising and all the, all the other stuff that comes with having Star Wars on your, on your side. Yeah. They made that back so quickly. You know that they've made that Marvel deal back. Who knows how many times? How much did oh, they even yeah. pay for Marvel? I don't, I don't remember know. it being like maybe a billion. Like that was so under the radar too. Yeah. Like well, because at that point Marvel wasn't worth a ton. Yeah. You know, and now they made it into a multi-billion-dollar thing. So you know they have buttloads of cash. Just maybe Disney is the Armageddon Empire. <laughs> no, but see, I'm only, and I was I was talking about this. It's with ridiculous, me. though. I, I, I view Disney as more of a good guy company, and I know it's 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 well, hard to view that because they're bigger. But no, another, no, I don't I don't think they're bad. I just think it's crazy. Like, I they're gonna end up owning everything. Like all the entertainment you consume is gonna end up right. having the Disney mark on it. You know, by and large, and Wally. Yeah, that's them. <laughs> yeah, by and large. Um, and I'm, I don't want Disney to take over entertainment. I don't. But I <laughs> they feel like probably could though. <laughs> they're on their way to you. I understand yeah. that. And I want there to be competition, aka why I want DC to be successful. You know, yep. because competition yeah, is good for Bros. everybody. You yeah. Know? Um, and and I think this is not the end of competition. And I feel like this is something that's really just inevitable that Disney obviously took over the Marvel space, and they just want to be the new owner of Marvel. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I I trust Disney hands over heels over is it, Comcast. Let me tell you that right oh, now. Oh, definitely, me too. Isn't that crazy though? That like years from now we'll be telling our kids, oh yeah, I remember when Marvel wasn't owned by Disney, and they'll be like, wait, really? Like Disney didn't make Marvel? Yeah, <laughs> Disney didn't make Marvel. Like they didn't make they didn't make Captain America. In the years when Stan Lee isn't around anymore. I know that'll be so sad. They'll, your kid might actually utter the words, "Who is Stan Lee?" Dude, the dude's like God a, forbid if I smack him. What right he's like? Now. What he's like? <laughs> Ninety three right now. Like he's old. He's, he's an old dude. Old. Like they're literally. I think they're literally like pre-recording cameos for him right now, just to ensure that oh, he's still in some of the future movies. That's, Seriously, they're taking precautions. The guy's old. I he's in great health, but he is old. Like he. Yeah. I would not. I don't know. He looks pretty. <laughs> for his nineties, he looks fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's not walking. Not really. Yeah. I mean, he's oh, good old Stanley. We love you, buddy. You noticed that he was in Deadpool 2, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't notice it until the second time around. Oh, really? That I watched it. Yeah, he's in the graffiti on one of the buildings as they're all parachuting down. I didn't catch it the first time, but he's yeah. there. But yeah, so now Di now Disney has the rights to, most, ob most obviously, Wolverine, the X-Men, um, they have the rights to uh, what? Deadpool, Deadpool. Um, Fantastic have, Four, Fantastic Four, and Namor. Explain, explain to those people who don't know what Namor is. Namor, he is either the king or the prince of Atlantis, and that so may, I just wanna, that may sound familiar. I just want to point out, I googled how old, and then it came up with Stanley. <laughs> oh, oh ninety-five burn. years old. Wow, that's yeah, Damn. that's that's there. But like Namor. One of the very few um, character ideas that Marvel actually beat DC to. Namor predates Aquaman, and so he's the first Atlantean superhero. Hmm. He's really cool. Um, he's uh, he's got like dark hair. Um, they like they like in Mar in the Marvel he's a universe. Jerk. Well, sometimes they yeah. he's one of those characters that has come around from being from being more of like an anti-hero or a bad guy to hmm. being more of like a hero. Um, but it's funny because in the Marvel Universe all the Atlanteans are Asian. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what made that choice, but it's cool. But yeah, Namor's really cool. Um, and so, I don't know, I'm a fan of... Because there was a movie made, made for him, right? Fantastic Who? Four and X-Men together. Namor's never made it to the big oh, really? screen as far as I know. Oh, I'm thinking of The Thing. The Thing, yeah. The Thing is so cool too. Which got so dissolved back into Marvel because... Um, Originally, because it actually wasn't, it was actually owned by Lionsgate. Wait, what are you talking about? The Which thing. thing are you talking about? The at? thing is part of the Fantastic Four. No, 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 that that property used to be owned by Lionsgate. The Fantastic Four did. 
No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, you're talking about the thing like the thing. horror movie? You talking about different. Swamp Thing? Because that's DC. There's, there's, okay. Hold there on. might be another the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to Google something. There's you a horror movie, then there's what a thing. What property from Marvel Fantastic did Lionsgate used to own? But while William's looking that up, um, never mind. Fan. He's got it. Jeez, because Lionsgate, because I was looking at, I was looking at all the stuff that. Um, uh, I want like a pie chart of who owned what. Oh, just there, it's there. Who owns what? Marvel <laughs> pie chart. <laughs> Good luck it's with like that. the blue is everything Marvel owns. The yellow is still what Marvel owns. Only now it's their spy shape. <laughs> yeah, no, it's almost all Disney now. Yeah. But oh, Man Thing, Man Thing. Yep, there you go. Which one's Man Thing? I don't know. Okay. So, <laughs> so Man Thing you sounds to be right though. Owned by Lionsgate, they made a movie. It wasn't that popular, and since they didn't do anything with it for such a long time, it re-dissolved back into. Yep, it does that. In fact, that's why they made that Fantastic Four movie with Michael B. Jordan. Yep, it's exactly. It's well, it's and it's a again. little bit reason why they made it, and all the reason why they rushed it. Because <laughs> I will stand by it. The first third of the new Fantastic Four movie was actually really good, and then you can tell they just rushed the rest of the movie. Yeah, like, especially the ending. I heard the ending is the worst oh, part. Oh, it's of the so movie. bad. Yeah, nothing kills a um, movie more than the ending. If you had, if, if you have a bad start, you can still have a good movie with a better ending. Oh yeah. For for example, Rogue One. Then I had a great beginning, but man, actually, that third yeah. act was so good that we yeah, love Rogue, I love Rogue because, One. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like solid. just when you think the Darth Vader cameo is just gonna be a little, like a little cameo, it ends up being like one of the best parts of the movie because it gets bigger. One of the best scenes of Star Wars in, it, in general, like yeah. crazy. But yeah, so going back to that, so that means we're actually gonna get a good Fantastic Four movie, which I'm so excited about. Please could cast John Krasin as. as uh, as Mr. Fantastic. Yo. Mm-hmm. Yo. Yeah. Or wait, the guy wait, wait, who? Uh, The Office. John Krasinski? Jim. Yeah. Yeah, that. You said John I'm sorry. Krasinisk? Yeah, that's a totally what different guy, name? isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's long and it starts with a K, alright? I love you, don't hate me, please. Um, yeah, either him or the guy from Game of Thrones. People know who I'm talking about. Peter Dinklage? No, not Peter Dinklage. <laughs> yeah, cast Peter Dinklage as Mr. I as, want him to as, as the thing. thing. Yeah, as the thing. <laughs> well, they could. He's already played a giant. What? No, the thing isn't a giant. Anyway, that guy. I'm forgetting his name right now, but he plays an important character on Game of Thrones, or he did, and he's also Prince Charming in the live-action Cinderella. Uh, wait, did I release this article yet? No. No. Okay, I made a Fantastic Four fan cast. Maybe I'll. You did. That. No, you. I did. did release that. Okay. Go look at that. I cast him as Mr. Fantastic, and I think... You did a good job with I that. think my I casting know. is a good... You but, go look at that. So not only is there going to be a Fantastic Four movie, they're going to be freaking involved in the Marvel Universe. Like, that's which, going to be crazy. They, yeah, which is a long time coming, because let me tell you, the Fantastic Four actually are supposed to play a big part in Civil War, and they didn't and couldn't because they didn't have the rights when they did it. So, unless they do a Civil War two, which would be a cool idea... Once we get past Thanos. So, Fantastic Four is obviously the most exciting thing because it's primed for a rebirth and done right. Yes. We have some other concerns, um, especially like with Deadpool. Disney has said in the past that they're going to let Fox still do their thing and not have to stick with Disney's rudimentary, family-friendly brand. And yeah. they're going to let Deadpool be Deadpool. And Money Talks, they know that Ryan Reynolds is the main reason why Deadpool is successful. Yeah. And you can't change the rating. You can't change the actor. No. You know that that has to stay for Deadpool It would even be, be okay if Deadpool, the character, doesn't become a big part of the Marvel Universe. It. What if he just takes over Stan Dude. Lee's place as no. cameos in movies? That'd be kind of funny. Even better. Even better. Because uh, I feel like Deadpool 3 is going to be a thing. Because uh -huh. like, the money's there. Oh, yeah, definitely. Actually, Deadpool I think 3? it's supposed to be X-Force, the movie, or something like that. Deadpool 3 is going to become a thing, that. and they're going to break the fourth wall about literally how now they own Disney properties now. And you're going to have different interactions, because now they have access so to the money. So you think they'll bring, mo bring characters into Deadpool and not the yes. other way around? And he's, okay. Ryan Reynolds was totally going to call it out. It's was like, yeah, it's weird. Now that we're owned by Disney, look who's here. And yeah, like, yeah. we actually have the X-Men now. We <laughs> wonder why Fox didn't do that. Yeah. Well, they did have the... They were hiding from him. Oh, my oh, yeah, gosh. This is a good scene. <laughs> so Great. <laughs> Pull the curtain down. Yeah. But I, I know I'm, I know I'm in the the minor, minority for this one. But I'm excited to see Wolverine fan, um, cast again because I want to I want to see him cast. 
in a more I comic would, book accurate way. I would appreciate if they used a different character to lead the X Men. Well, As in, like, well they should. They should. They should wait a little while to re to bring Wolverine back, and they should put. Cyclops and Storm as back, the forefront, back as the at the front of the X Men, like they actually are in the comics. Yeah, yeah. and that'd be good because you, what you do is that you reintroduce the X. If you're going, if Disney chooses mm -hmm. to reintroduce the X Men, yep. start with a standalone movie like that, yep. and then slowly add in. And then all Black the rest. Panther and Storm can be a couple because that happens. Didn't he already get married though? No, did, no, he didn't. He has a girlfriend. She can go away. Like, like Yikes. Storm's way cooler, man. Go back she to Wakanda can control where the weather, from. which would be great right now, by Look the way. Wakanda, there's a storm coming. Ooh. Yeah. The, she's going to bless the rains down in Africa, man. <laughs> or Wakanda. Which Wakanda's is in Africa. in Africa. Yeah, so she go to bless the rains down in Africa. <laughs> she's going to bring freeze. the rains. I never freeze. <laughs> I never freeze. Oh, my word. But Frozone does. So, so yeah. So the only thing is that, since they said that they're basically not touching Deadpool, they're going to keep it for the most part. It's going to be same. That also means that they could go either way on. Because the, they haven't said anything about X Men. They've only oh. been saying stuff about Deadpool, Disney. It'll be well because that's the biggest question. Right. Yeah. So X Men is weird. We know X. We know X Men will be back. And then X Men also has. Such oh, an established they have a new universe. movie coming out. Yeah, that is no, that is yeah. Okay, sorry, keep going because now I get what you're getting at. Yeah, because like yeah. they have such an established universe, they don't just have like Deadpool has two movies. Fantastic yeah. Four has three movies that were basically failures. The first one was the most okayish. Yeah, and that was only okayish. Here, here's the thing with the X Men thing though is yeah they have a pretty decent X Men universe going on right now, but that's the thing is it's like. Well, it's pretty good, so you can't just like scrap it, I guess. But movies. Disney could totally do something way cooler. You know they could. They could. You know they could. They, I that's just what I mean. It's like they could go either way. I feel on this. like it's uh, for me. I feel like at this point, it's unfortunate that X Men is doing okay because I would rather it just start that's over. That's what I meant by Fantastic <laughs> Four being the most prime position. They oh yeah, are because it is bad and they need to re. Yeah, yeah. and it's time because what? So I would expect them to come back first because yes. it'd be the easiest. X Men, they're gonna have to. Re Really, really think about and yeah, put, because okay, do they like, incorporate what's going on right, right. now? Or because do they... X Men has some beloved movies. X One and Two are beloved. The X first... Three is forgettable, and they yeah. actually re they actually for... do forget it. <laughs> first Class was amazing, and I oh yes, First Class, First Class, uh, okay, and Days of Future Past almost as amazing. Some people don't like Days it as of Future much, Past but was I... my favorite superhero movie when it came out. Yeah, it was it really was good, really good. Some people yeah. don't like it as much as First Class, but I'm willing to argue it was better. But that's yeah. fine. It was a good movie, and people like that one a lot. People also really liked Logan, not unlike Origins or the. I was I was gonna say I'm glad you haven't even mentioned Origins yet. <laughs> like I was just gonna go along with it, like we like it never happened because it didn't. Well, it's so good Deadpool, <laughs> but they know it, and that was amazing. I know, but he made it like officially not ever happen. <laughs> he was so literally rewrote so that in that in Green Lantern. Way to go! Um, so yeah, I think is, Alex what, might melt. What, I just might saying. actually melt. When is um hit you witch? <laughs> When, huh. when is that remake coming for Green Lantern? Um, actually, it's on the slate for movies, and it's such a cool idea. I hope it gets like I hope it gets I hope like we get closer to it coming out because it's gonna be like a buddy cop film um, with with John Stewart and um, that makes and sense. Hal Jordan, and that is such a good idea for a Green Lantern movie. That's do you perfect. remember? Do you remember the was it the Hornet or whatever? The Green Hornet. Hornet. That's independent, I think. Yeah, no, Pretty it sure was. Like Dark but that movie wasn't that bad. Like, it wasn't like critically acclaimed or anything. Yeah. But it was a great movie, and I thought it was cool because cool it was fun and different. Yeah. And then people liked it for that year, and no one's talked about it ever I know. since. Seth Rogen. I see. A, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I see a similar thing happening with that in a way. I don't know. Some people may be like, "Will, what are you talking about?" But eh, uh -huh. I, I like. It. But like. Oh, every time we talk about DC, I always say the same thing, but I'm gonna say it again. Shazam's coming out. I'm super excited. Aquaman's coming out in December, and I Wonder Woman Two is set in 1984. I've said all this already, so I'm just gonna. Well, stop. I, I appreciate that they're taking a step back. I'm so they're excited. Like, I appreciate that they're taking a step back and trying to rethink everything they've done because they're like they were really banking on Justice League being a success, and it just yeah. it just wasn't. So I just I'm sick of like Wonder Woman is the one shining spot. In, in DC and I'm so sick of like yeah. I'm like when when a new DC movie comes out I'm like yeah it was so good 
because because I want it to be and then a couple months go by and I realize it really wasn't I did I did it with I did it with Batman v Superman I did it with Justice League please stop please stop making me want to love it so bad that I pretend to or like I fool myself into yeah. thinking it's good I want them it's like to a actually bad relationship. be it is I want them to back. actually be good like I don't <laughs> I don't want a girlfriend I have to pretend to like Ooh. That's DC for you, right? That's yeah, deep. I know. Yikes! And Marvel is uh, what's Marvel then? Marvel, Marvel. I don't know. It's like Marvel that, is that best it's like friend that, who never lets you down. Or no, no. Well, for me, Marvel is like that really cool best friend that you're like jealous of. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's me. Like, Marvel's so like I know he, I know he's cool and he's nice to me, but I'm also really jealous of him. <laughs> like, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, but D I'll say I'll, I've said it before and I'll say it again. DC is learning from their mistakes, and I think and they have I mean. a lot of potential I feel like them on the a horizon. Break is really them like, okay, we need to focus on this Aquaman movie because yeah. this Aquaman movie has to be good. And Jared Leto's getting his own Joker movie. You can think, you can feel how you want about that, but I'm always optimistic. I think it'll be fun if they handle it right, because that's the thing. Is David Ayer, David Goyer? I think it was or David Ayer, David Ayer who directed the Suicide Squad movie, he's a really good director, and he directs some dark movies. And I think he's actually said he was really disappointed with the, with the version of Suicide Squad that came out to theaters. Like, it's, you can tell that once the studio got their hands on it, they rebranded it, changed the tone of the movie. And Kinda so like, like how EA's been ruining Star Wars games. Exactly, Ooh. so <laughs> Suicide Squad was gonna be good. If you go back and look at the initial trailers that came out, those were good and everybody liked it. It's when they started to turn it into like a Guardians of the Galaxy wannabe that everybody's like, what like, are you oh, doing? Oh, people, people like the comedy. Uh, yeah, we gotta change it. We gotta. Yeah, I so think, no. I think it was they were so concerned about it being a bad movie that they over adjusted. Yeah, and Jared Leto wasn't bad as the Joker. They just shoehorned his character in. That's all. You just wait. The Jared Leto Joker movie will well, be good. Well, I don't good. feel like they shoehorned his character in. I felt like his character had a better place in it. And they so, they didn't so utilize of, him well enough. They took so much of it out. Like what well, the heck? Yeah. Well, because first it started as well. It's a suicide squad, suicide squad movie. Joker has to be in it, even if it doesn't really make sense completely, or like he's because he was really like a side character in the movie. They just didn't utilize him enough. He should have been he should have been the main bad guy of the movie. To be honest, like the whole enchantress thing was dumb. They could have just made Joker. I'm sorry, we're so off track from what no, you're talking about. No, it's okay. About. Yeah. No, it's just yeah. Anyways, I'm really excited for this merger because we're going to get so many awesome movies I know. from it. Yeah. Um, I mean, what's the worst Marvel movie that's been made under Disney's reign? Um, Iron Man 2 or 3. Iron Man 3. And right after it is Age of Ultron. But none of those are bad Yeah, movies. and neither one... Well, actually, I hate Iron Man 3. <laughs> yeah, I hate Iron Man 3 with a burning passion. Okay. So, I'm sorry. that one is bad. I hear a lot of people dislike <laughs> Iron Man 2 more than 3. Well, at least Iron Man 2 didn't horribly, criminally misrepresent Iron Man's arch nemesis. That was a fail. Most of us don't Big have time. That, uh, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I just, I'm so salty still tell. about Iron it's, Man it's, 3. It's, it's, it's okay. It hurts me. <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, so like, Disney would have to make a new worst to make this bad. And yeah. honestly, especially with Fantastic Four, which we expect to be the first thing to do with this. Yep. The bar set really freaking low. Yeah, I know. You could make just an okay movie, and we'd be like, yeah! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th they could make what? L they could, no, because the, even The Incredible Hulk is really underrated. That's actually a really good movie. IGN has a really good article on that, by the way. You should go look it up. The Incredible Hulk, which is actually part of the, the MCU, is a really good movie. It's underrated. But yeah, so that's that. And that's that. What you got, Alex? What you got? What you, what you, what you got? I probably have got dehydration. That's what I. Oh, I got some dehydration. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got a new uh, new trailer for Wreck It Ralph, or or otherwise known as Ralph Breaks the Internet, and I want to talk about that because it looks really interesting. But as I know that some of that you guys, or you at least, have. Um, we're cautious about it, basically. Because, Cautiously optimistic. Yeah, because like it's Wreck It Ralph, so we know it's like. It's basically, from the first movie, usually is like, all right, it's a video game character's coming to life, which is awesome. Yeah. We've had, like, you know, toys come to life, video game characters now. But he's going to the internet, and it looks like it's 
like you said, it looks like it might be a lot like the Emoji movie, which I have not seen. <laughs> but Wise it's, choice. it's just looks it, like it's it looks like, like they're taking away from the yeah. whole video game aspect. Like it, it looks like they're focusing on like mobile games because I remember in the one tr one of the trailers I watched, it's like they're in a mobile game. Okay, so uh, I want to I want to start by saying that I like the trailer for this. The, technically, the trailer itself and how it was portrayed offers me no reason for concern for this movie. However, what they've shown in the movie, and what I'm as I'm trying to pick apart what this movie will do plot-wise, and what the plot's going to be, that's where I'm concerned, because I feel a lot of things, a lot, like we see a lot of sponsor stuff in there, with Google, with Snapchat, with Facebook, and of course the Disney stuff, which... Twitter! I'm, I would rather them focus on the Disney, and them poke fun at their own stuff. I'm into that, that's cool. But... You are walking on dangerous territory, my friend, especially with the Emoji movie coming out. And I, I feel like the way that they, this movie is coming out, I feel like the Emoji movie came out a time where they had enough time to take that into account when making this movie of what not to do. I haven't even seen the first Rick and Ralph. I think it'd be interesting if they, like, they I go online, but they go to, like, the streaming services for video games that they'd be able to, like, you know, connect They should go to Steam! Way. Yeah, they yeah. should go to Steam! That would've been really cool. Or, like, they get to Steam and they're like, Cool! Where are all the other video game streaming services? And Steam is like, What other ones? <laughs> like... Freaking Uplay and, um... Origin are Seriously. off in the corner, just like, like shoot, Did you know shoot. that even if you buy a hard copy of a game, you still have to install it through Steam? Yep. Steam, like, owns, on like, PC gaming. They do, yep. which it's okay because Steam is really good. I use Steam. Steam's awesome. It is cool that that they're. Uh, That's why Valve hasn't made Fall, uh, Half Life Three yet. They're making all kinds of money off of everybody else's video games. I'm sorry, Alex. Keep going. <laughs> if you can. <laughs> I don't know if I can make much. I can't go on. <laughs> I'd, I'd say it, it is cool that um, Disney is incorporating more of their own product in the movie, though. Like it was nice to see. I, I guess it's. It's kind of a reminder to us being like, oh yeah, they own all this stuff. Like they have Star Wars, they have some, they have you know Winnie the Pooh. That they was have. So cool. It, it was nice seeing that, and it was also really cool seeing, seeing all the Disney princesses together, but in a very different fashion from what I'm used to. I love when she breaks her glass she slipper breaks her like glass a bottle. Oh, she's like, That's terrifying. See, that was that. awesome. That I'm into. What, what wow, gets okay. me worried is well, not, not <laughs> that <laughs> having the princesses. That I'm into having. The whole thing with like seeing Facebook, seeing Google, seeing Snapchat. Oh, you think that's kind of icky? That, that yeah. worries me because the whole because they seem so. I've never watched well, it. Well, it goes by quick. What if what if that's all it is in the movie? And that's what I'm just, saying. You don't that's, know. That's, okay, that's yeah. cool. But if there's going to be a lot of that, that's a really there's a very <laughs> fine line of what makes that enjoyable and okay and just why are you doing this and is this freaking hashtag sponsored? Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, because if it's but, their own stuff, they know how to use it, and they can poke fun at themselves. And I love, I love some good fourth ball bricks, and that makes sense with the Wreck-It Ralph universe. Yeah, they've already done that a lot. I actually saw the Wreck-It Ralph trailer for the first time today before Incredibles two. I mean, the regular trailer or the new trailer? Like the new one. Oh, okay. yeah, I saw the new one for the first time, and I saw like the stormtroopers, and I saw like the Marvel banner, and I literally like asked William, I was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, I forgot that they could do that now. Did you make that face just like, oh! I wouldn't be surprised if I did. But it was less embarrassing because it was dark in the end. So you just made that sound, nobody knew what the context I was? I don't know if I made the sound. Oh, got it. I am here. So, what did you like about the first movie? First movie, um. I liked. It, it was cool because, for one, they did incorporate characters that we did know for a short amount of time. I mean, it's very difficult to get the licensing for that sort of stuff. But they also were able to make their own characters that seemed genuine, like like real video game characters. Like it's, it's basically like they're in an arcade and they're playing arcade games and then you're seeing them and like the characters don't really want to be, oh, don't always want to be what they are created to be, mm. basically. Like Rick and Ralph. He doesn't want to be the bad guy all the time. Um, and it's nice to see, like, one of the things I really enjoyed was seeing him go to his support group for villains, yes. basically. That was amazing. That was just fun. Is Bowser, isn't Bowser there? Bowser is in there, yeah. Okay. And yeah. See, see, the stuff like that, that's what I liked about the first movie. And I feel like... Wait, was that in the first movie? Yeah. yeah. I need to see that. Yeah, Watch I don't it. know why you haven't seen it. It really took me apart. I don't know. Part. That and the Big Hero 6. And you see you haven't seen Big Hero What is wrong what? Everybody you? says that How to me. How have you not seen okay, that movie? Whenever I say this... People always do that, and then they always say, Wesley, you would love Big Hero 6. It's so your movie. 
Yeah. And it's every it time. I know. Yeah. I know. I need to see it. Don't. We're gonna watch it. Okay. Yeah. All right. But what I was gonna say is that that scene right there, that was like, I really, really like that scene, and it seems similar to that from the first movie. Mm -hmm. So far, this trailer doesn't indicate any scenes like that, and that worries me. Again, like I said, the trailer was good and all, but I was like, I feel like they could potentially be deviating so far from the first movie. It's not. It doesn't have the the same charm that the original movie had because the whole flat, like the, the whole thing was that. They were video game characters interacting with each other. Right. Now it's just video game characters going into the internet, which is so widely... And if that's all that is, then I'm going to be really turned off by this movie. Yeah. Like, seriously. I don't think it'll end up being like that. And I hope not, because I feel like Disney is smarter than that. Because that's the whole pitfall with the Emoji movie. They're I think like, they're just... We can make cash off of poking fun at the internet and emojis, right? What right? I th what, right? I th what I think they're doing is I think they're just selling the unique feature of this movie as opposed to the first one. And it'll still be. I hope because like, it is like I want this to be really good because I really enjoyed the first movie and oh, this is I don't know I just have a this, lot of concerns. This goes back to the whole like the sequel thing. Like, do we need to have a sequel for this? And like I was gonna say, did we do we do we need? I didn't feel like there's we a lot. It. Okay. I didn't feel like we needed it either. I mean, like it it would if we did, then I'd want them to do the story correctly and while yeah it's, we while need to wait 14 years okay yeah <laughs> see yeah it's like do a story that is worth telling don't do it because you want to make money and, and that's see, the problem nowadays that's like, everyone another, wants to make i'd rather sequels. them come up with a new property than make then yeah like, do something come like up. it's it's difficult i know to come up with new stuff but they're a multi-billion dollar company they can do that they can hire people with yeah. that, <laughs> and not only that but like or just watch anime and then you know <laughs> just or, watch or, anime. or don't or just watch anime. Or don't. Um, watch the good watch anime. anime. Uh, but what I was going to say is that another thing that concerns me about the trailer is that I don't feel like a clear plot point has been given. Like, yes, they're going to the internet, but why are they going to the internet? They haven't said anything about that. They haven't given us a good plot point. We haven't seen a villain or anything like that's this. That's where life takes place now, William, is on the internet. I the internet is real life now. But just <laughs> stop it. Have you <laughs> seen Ready Player One? Yeah. Just so many things with this just concerns me because I feel like I don't know. The the other way of looking at this is that they're hiding so much about it is because it's supposed to be a surprise and it's gonna be really a good payoff. That would be fantastic, and then I would appreciate them not telling us what it's the like, plot is. Ah, William. <laughs> but I it's feel like, like that's not the type of movie that this is. It's not wait, a clever wait, plot. You feel, it you feel like Disney knows what they're doing, but you're not going to give them credit for being smart enough to have a good twist. It feels like they're milking it for all it's worth, but they're diluting it with water. Like it's not, it's not what we want anymore. It's like <laughs> it's, it's, it's skim milk, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Right, Best right, movie. Ralph breaks the internet. It's skim milk, man. Not a whole milk, you liar. You're skimming on us. <laughs> Dishonor upon you, dishonor <laughs> upon your cow. <laughs> I want sequels to be made of whole milk. We already went through this with the whole Disney sequel movies that were coming out in like the 90s and 2000s that weren't that great. Like, you know, straight to DVD Holy ones. crap. I'm yeah. so glad those don't exist anymore. Some of those were What, straight decent. to DVD uh, sequels? Yeah. Well, no, no. I, I Not straight to DVD, lot. straight to VHS. That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're so old. I love VHSs, man. Yeah. Who remembers Aladdin 2, right? Aladdin 2? Hey! I love Aladdin 2. Get out! Wait, not Aladdin 2. I like the King of Thieves. The That's th the third one. Okay. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> not the second one. Is the second one with Jafar? Or not the first one? No, the second one is Jafar, and it doesn't have Robin Williams in it. That's why it's so awful. What? Yeah. What's the plot of the first one? The first the one? The first one? Yeah. He gets the... Uh, the is that a the Jafar lamp. in it? Yeah. Yes, of Jafar, course. Yeah. Jafar is in the second one too. Yes. Oh, I swear I've seen the third one more than the original. I swear, like I really think I have. I love the. I love the. I really did like the third one. I thought that's his probably, dad was so cool. I think that's one of the most. His dad. You mean her dad, right? That has no to, Aladdin's dad. Aladdin doesn't have. Did Aladdin's wait, dad is the king of thieves. Oh, I didn't yeah. watch that movie. What? You need to see that! Watch Big Hero 6, you we'll uncultured swap. swine! We'll swap- No, this one- We'll swap movies, Alex. Yeah. Fine. Because I just know you- I have to convince you to hang out with me. That's you're a gonna, lie. That's a lie. Go, you gonna go there now? No, that's a lie. I love you wanna talk about it? Foot, foot, I love Alex. Foot, kiss. kiss. <laughs> um, excuse me, no! That's a quote. Get out! <laughs> what is it from? It's from, um... 
Red versus blue, right? Okay, because you were really just kind of scaring me. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what was going what? on. It's either red versus blue or just a uh, rooster teeth thing. One or the other. I don't know. Probably rooster teeth. Okay, can I say something about rooster teeth real quick, though? They're... I'm sorry, but I was scrolling Facebook and I saw some ads for their clothes. They're, like, hardcore on their ads, like, and, like, merchandising. They're the so clothes, good at that. Their clothes are really good, though. I know. I didn't uh, realize they were so into mer merchandising. They're I'm doing this cool thing. Sorry. Pee, we, we're, we're not? It's not, not does not appease you? It's thick, and I don't need a thick hoodie. Oh, it's too thick, boy, for you. <laughs> um, real quick. Real, real quick sidebar. Um, what's really cool is that some of their main personalities have their own clothing lines now. That's so, so cool. So that's not even related to their property. So they're like, hey, I like this like, thing. <laughs> like, The guy who plays Griff. He's got his own clothing line now, like the summer collection. I don't know. I wish I knew more of their names. It's okay. I didn't know their names until like last year or two years ago. You want to wear the Jeff line of clothes? They're all dad clothes. <laughs> nice. Anyways, go back to our original topic. Sorry. Um, Sorry. Yeah. No, I really liked Wreck-It Ralph, and it was it was a fun movie with a cool concept, and I didn't feel after that like I needed a sequel. Like that was a pretty well capped movie. Really wholesome and good stuff, and I was fine with that. And if they didn't immediate, no, did they need? I don't think they immediately followed up Rocket, Wreck It Ralph two with a trailer. But I remember first really looking into it when they had a trailer, and I was like, okay, that doesn't look terrible. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I'm too busy laughing at this new trailer with all this funny stuff they put in it. I was like, where's the substance? Like, is this yeah. movie? Because that's the thing is that the first one was good too, but it had a lot of substance and it was good. Had a great plot mm. and great characters. They're gonna have to do a lot to match that. And I just, they haven't given us a lot to believe that it is going to be. I don't know. I want this to be good, and I just don't have, like, the more I talk about it, the more I feel like I'm expecting less and less from this movie, which could be good. If I stick my expectations low, maybe I'll be impressed. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So. Hopefully it's good. That's what I did with Solo and ended up loving it. Right? Yeah. When you have low expectations for a movie, you're able to enjoy yeah. it. That's what just I do with Justice Just stop expecting League. so much, guys. Really? Don't expect so much from things. Yeah. You're gonna be disappointed. Yeah. If you have low expectations, then be you'll a be realist. Get, then you'll be happy. And that's what I'm saying to Wesley. Uh, I know going back to our first thing, but like Incredibles, the fact that it met expectations was crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, Dude, what else has met expectations lately? I feel like we've talked about eight, four, Infinity, uh, War. Infinity War. Oh yeah. I met yeah, expectations. Talk, yeah. Talk about meeting the expectations from like ten years of hype. Dude, it's, that is hard. It to is do. so hard to meet expectations now. Look at Star Wars. Star Wars is failing only because it's failing to meet. Not that they're bad okay. movies. Okay, let's talk about that for a second. Even though it's not really related to Wreck It Ralph. It's related I'm to sorry. Disney, which okay. is also is. which they have Star Wars in yeah. Wreck It Ralph. St um, halting the produ halting the production of Solo Star <laughs> of of standalone Star Wars movies because Solo didn't do commercially is one of the worst decisions decisions they have ever made. That's so dumb. That's so dumb. Like, okay, so even though Solo is getting good reviews, just because it's performing bad money-wise, you're going to halt the whole thing. They can stand to take a hit like that. Like, come on, that's well, just dumb. Obviously, what they need to do is listen to us and give us a freaking Obi-Wan movie. Yeah, okay, Solo, I really liked Solo, and it was good, but why was that your first choice for a standalone character movie? Why would you take a main character I, like, for Solo? I understand that solo we all love movie. Han Solo, but is that really the first character that comes to mind when you think of a solo movie you want? The first, no? the first one that um, everyone requested was Boba Fett. Which is next? Boba Fett or Obi Wan? Movie. I might even want a droids movie. <laughs> like that Wait, would be kind of cool. No. What? R two D two and C three P. Oh, okay. Yeah, that. I, I thought droids. I was thinking that's Clone the Wars, entire like, series. What are you talking about? No, I think that would be kind of cool. A droids movie? No. Nah. No, am I the only one that thinks it wouldn't be cool yeah. to have like a droid, like buddy, like a buddy comedy Star Wars movie? But that's we've already had that. Though. I don't think that an entire movie can take that, can hold that on its own. Maybe it's Star Wars, know. not Maybe. like you know droids, droid Star wars, buddies, droid buddies, <laughs> droid jokes. Hey, yeah. yeah so um, hopefully this movie will be good. I'm still cautious because honestly, at this point. Sequels, it, we are we've been lucky with a couple, but yeah. with a couple, with a, a couple, couple. Yeah. we've had so many disappointments. So I am um, especially I feel like why is it that animated movies have a hard time making sequels? What's with that? I don't know. <laughs> I need to see Wreck It Row. Yes, do. yes you do. And if you have a viewers, um, watch it. Yeah, don't be like Wesley. 
Don't don't see be a Wreck-It Ralph. Because both, both me, and, both, me and, both me and Alex have seen both Wreck-It Ralph and Big Hero Six because they're awesome. Don't movies. be like Alex. Watch the Aladdin King of Thieves. Wow. Or Prince of Thieves, whatever it's called. I'm taking one of those two. Away. No, I I, mm. I will die. <laughs> I've already died inside. Oof. Oh, that's 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 not okay. That's dark. Yeah. So is my vision because it's so hot in here. <laughs> it I'm is going. really, it is really hot in here. Oh my word! We're gonna walk yeah. downstairs and it's gonna what feel uh, like paradise. Speaking of Record Ralph, what else is? Because like that's the Disney Animation Studio, which is separate to Pixar. Oh, the Nutcracker! The Nutcracker! I'm so excited about the Nutcracker, the Four Ralphs. Okay, just you. I'm. Ah, I'm. You saw I, the trail. We saw the trailer. I love the, the Nutcracker growing up. It's literally like. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be like hard I'm gonna be seeing that movie for sure. Okay. Someone come with me please. Sure. You <laughs> <laughs> have to be like I thought it was no, us. No, no, no. I'm not being, it. I'm, I don't know if I'm, I'm gonna not go. being desperate. I'll go see I will I, I'm sure I there's gonna be movies while. by myself all the time. I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of people who wanna see the nutcracker. I just I love the nutcracker. It's a big part of my childhood. It reminded me a lot of Alice in Wonderland when they were showing the trailer. Yeah. Uh, it actually reminded me a little bit of of Narnia, and not in a bad way. It did too. Not, especially not, going through the portal, I was like, "Is this?" But but Narnia? not but not but not in a bad way though. Like I thought it was kind of cool. It was more like Alice in Wonderland with her falling down the hole, you know. Her falling down the hole. The hole. But yeah, that that's a Disney movie. I'm oh, and Christopher Robin. That looks. I want to see that so that bad. That looks pretty cute. And I mean, yeah. is so this we, the Obi Wan movie McGregor we really want? Christopher Robin. <laughs> know, why not Obi Wan? I love you and McGregor. He's like. He's why so, is he not in more movies? Because he's one of those actors that's kind of like that. He likes to. He's he's more picky. Like he's not just like I gotta be in every movie. Because he's not like a super super popular actor. He's but a he's also actor. But he yeah. But he's not one of those actors that's like I just gotta be in all kinds of movies so that I can get my name out there. He's that's like. Great. He's. I think he's pretty classy. Like he just. He's in movies that he wants to be a part of. So, fair enough. Yeah, I love. I like Ewan McGregor a lot. What did Disney Animation make last before Wreck It Ralph two? Uh, I don't know. We had Coco from Pixar, which I haven't seen. I haven't seen that it's either. It's sad. I watched it, it last week. It is really sad. Does it end sad or is? Uh, yeah. Well, talks uh, about the Living Dead. So there's that. Ooh. So, yeah, people well, it's so all the all the Mexican culture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, geez, what did? Okay, I'm gonna have to look this up because I want to know like what kind of track. Three Hero Six came out after Wreck It Ralph. Yeah. Disney. Disney. Animated movies. Don't show me Pixar movies. I want to see the Disney animated sector of stuff. I love Rapunzel. Oh, Zootopia was the last one, was it? Oh, no, no, there's one. There's got to be one. There's got to be one Zootopia. after that. Zootopia is an old one. That was 2016, too. which was a fantastic movie, by the way. Zootopia? Yeah. I love Zootopia. Sloths would totally be DMV. Clerks. I went to the DMV recently, and yep. Definitely <laughs> Sloths. I like that. Accurate. Um, what, what? the heck? It keeps showing me really old I stuff. I hope our listeners are really enjoying listening to the fans. Sounds. I hope they didn't. I hope it's, it's not disruptive. Okay, here I, we go. I don't really nope, care that much. Cool. Because it's really hot here. Yeah. William. I blame you. What the heck? I look. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. M- Moana. So. Duh. Oh yeah, I love Moana. I thought Moana was Pixar. I was actually just in a conversation wait, about Moana. What? Wait, 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 wait. I gotta no, ask you a question. Is Pixar. Moana's not Pixar. No, nope, it's not. Frozen. It's Are Disney you? Animation. Yeah, yeah, they've done their own thing. I got an important question about Moana. Okay, Go is Maui a super muscular guy, or is he like one of those guys where he's really muscular but with fat on top? He's thick with four C's. Okay, exactly. <laughs> that was what I said too. Everybody's like, "No, Dwayne the Rock Johnson plays him, so he's all just, just like hard muscle." And I was like, "No way." Maui's definitely like, like a husky heavyweight like su- kind of like guy, like a sumo wrestler kind of. Yeah, that kind of like that kind of like strong, which is cool. But yeah, I was, I was. So in- yeah, Disney Animation is doing great recently. So their track record says that this should be a good movie. They haven't made a bad movie in a while. Pixar never makes bad movies. What are you talking about? This isn't Pixar. This is Disney Animation. It's a different sector. Yeah, Remember? that. I love Pixar, though. They've had some hit Wait, misses. did Pixar do Wally? Yep. I love Wally. Wally. All right. 
Well, that's all we got. We would love to get in some air conditioning again. Yep. So air conditioning. Hope you enjoyed this. We we did our best to enjoy it. We're gonna get cool and not be so heated. So yeah. So thanks. Join us next time. Stay um, kind, geeks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.